Uh, hello, uh, Billy Ray Hussey uh, with Southern Folk Pottery Collector Society in Bennett, North Carolina. And I just want to invite you to uh, go back a little bit, maybe to the early 1800s on some uh, Pottersville, Edgefield District, uh, South Carolina slave made pieces. And they're all unique. That's what we're going to talk about today, especially this one right here to my right, which has been a uh, theory for years, the mark on it. And let's just look at the mark first if you want to while we're right here. Let's just look at that mark a minute. It's a B and it's a it's a horizontal B. And this is the second piece that we've had and about the fourth one that's known. And just recently, we've come up with three theories that may be the answer to this pottery. It's pretty unique actually. And it's a beautiful piece, obviously you can tell that, just looking at it, it looks like a, uh, the way the handles and the neck is, it looks like a, a king's crown on top of this beautiful early shape, you tell the tapered bottom of the bulbous shoulder. But anyway, this is associated with Amos Landrum pottery, and the Landrums were the earliest uh, uh, family that settled in Edgefield District, and at one time their mill works, potters, coopers, uh, all kinds of things, grist mills and such, which is called Landrumsville, then it became Pottersville, and more, moreover, it was called just Edgefield District uh, for because it engulfed several potteries through the 1850s and a little beyond that, actually. But at any rate, uh, the B here, the theories on this piece is that for years, the uh, family of uh, historians named the Holcombs had surmised that it could be from the A.F. Brannan site, which was about 1820. And that was suffice for a while, but over we've been sort of studying it over for a while, the society that has been studying it over. And we came up with some information from another historian gathering family in Edgefield, the Farrells. Um, and they come up with some information uh, that was printed in Cinder Baldwin's Great Noble Jar about a slave potter by the name of Buster. And we feel like that, that B could be Buster's, and that would place it about 1835, because he's listed working for Amos Landrum in about 1835, and also he's in 1850 census. So he potted there for some 15 years at least, and he was born in 1790. But at any rate, uh, another theory that's just surfaced that has not been published um, officially, I guess, through Rob Hunter, uh, uh, has gave us an idea, and he's, he's sort of theorized with some other folks, other historians, and appreci appreciators of uh, Edgeville Pottery, that it, it could have stood for shackles, uh, which the slaves had to endure on their feet and as well their hands at different times through transportation or punishment. And so there could be a possibility, it could have been Buster, uh, signifying his name, which could have uh, got by with his uh, owners at that time, and he was later transferred to Jasper Gibbs, by the way. But at any rate, uh, and, and it could have stood for the enslavement that he was enduring, and that horizontal B could have been used like to symbolize the shackles or the enslavement that he was in. But again, it is my noble uh, to think about that this is a major piece of another slave besides Dave that we'll talk about in just a moment. And look at the beautiful runs on that thing, too. It really adds to it. This is in our auction here as well. That's probably about a, about a six or seven gallon piece, just a monumental piece. Now let's switch over to this over here. This is from the Collar Road site, uh, probably about 1840s. Slave made, slave decorated, mostly by the female decorators. And this has got two different kinds of decoration, the thistles and the rosettes and the fern leaf. And it's got the same on the other side. But what's so fascinating about this piece is Right here, there is a, a sketching of a young girl in a hoop skirt, which would have been antebellum period, obviously. And there are two, I think there's two other pieces, I know there's two, there could be more, but there's at least two pieces that are decorated, hoop skirt, uh, a lady in a hoop skirt. Uh, one is photographed across from the clay, the other is photographed in Great Noble Jar, as well as other places. But the hoop skirt is right there. And that's an amazing thing because we didn't see it and the owner of the piece didn't see it. This has probably been unnoticed for years. And we thought it was just some hand scratching next to the handle by the potter applying the handle. 
but it sincerely is a young girl in a hoop skirt. So this is a major find right here to have that as well as this. So she might have just been sketching to try like a precursor to the hoop skirt decorated pieces out of the road shop. And Colin Rose, by the way, was not a potter. He was just a business owner. He hired us, uh, and Thomas Chandler was associated with this shop as well for some of the decoration primarily. Now this piece right here, for just a moment, the reason we want to talk about it, there's a lot of Daves. In fact, the society's had some 95 Daves over its 35 years, and we've had three poems, and about uh, probably half or two-thirds of that has been signed with Dave and the dates. But this has got the LM right here, and it's got his X. But things about this, now the thing about this, just a bit, the reason I brought this to your attention is, is all of us has had a Hershey bar. You know, you have a Hershey bar, and the first thing about eat about when you start eating on a Hershey bar is how sweet it is. Well, this is a sweet little piece right here. It's the smallest one we've ever had. Smallest piece we've ever known. Out of 95 days, we've never had one that small. This is probably about a two gallon, beautiful condition. And it is in this uh, particular sale that we're coming up. So I thought we'd just kind of look over these pieces a little bit, give you some food for thought, and let you know the recent discoveries uh, that keeps coming out of these fascinating areas. Appreciate your time, and our phone number, of course, is 336-581-4246, and these will be for sale during the month of May and early June. Appreciate your time, and goodbye.